yes people good morning good afternoon good evening to all south india student how are you hope so you are good i am also good so from today we are going to start with the revision lecture that is applicable for may and november 2023 examination now guys remember one point uh, whatever finance bill presented by nirmala sitaraman ji as on 1st feb 2023 that is not applicable for your examination for your examination finance act 2022 is applicable finance act, finance bill 2023 is not applicable okay so we are going to start with the first revision lecture and in the first topic we are going to discuss the tax rate applicable for your examination that is tax rate for the assessment year 23 24 for your examination your previous year is 22 23 means whatever income earned in the previous year 22 23 you are going to file the return in the assessment year 23 24 so for your examination your previous year 22 23 and assessment year 23 24 first we are going to start with the general tax rate or you can say that normal tax rate so what is the tax rate in case of individual huf aop boi artificial juridical person so here lawmaker says that in case of individual huf aop boi artificial juridical person there is a slab rate up to 250000 is basic exemption means up to 250000 there is no tax 250000 to 5 lakh 5% 5, 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% more than 10 lakh 30% now guys in case of the senior citizen now what is the meaning of senior citizen here senior citizen means resident individual age 60 years or more in previous year so if there is any resident individual and age is 60 years or more in previous year that person is called as the senior citizen now in case of senior citizen up to 3 lakh is a basic exemption means up to 3 lakh there is no tax 3 lakh to 5 lakh 5% 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% more than 10 lakh 30% but guys remember here here <coughs> law makers mention that resident individual it means for an example there is a one person name is mr lobo he is located in usa and suppose his age is 72 years that person is located in usa and suppose he is a non resident his age is 72 years question is that is that person will be treated as senior citizen or not answer is no that person not treated as senior citizen because senior citizen means that person should be a resident in india resident individual is 60 years or more in a previous year then only that person will be treated as a senior citizen so for senior citizen up to 3 lakh there is no tax 3 lakh to 5 lakh 5% 5 lakh to 10 lakh 20% more than 10 lakh 30% now in case of the super senior citizen now what is the meaning of super senior citizen guys here super senior citizen means resident individual age 80 years or more in a previous year that is called super senior citizen in case of super senior citizen up to 5 lakh there is no tax means 5 lakh is a basic exemption now 5 lakh to 10 lakh directly 20% and more than 10 lakh there is a 30% here remember 5% slab rate is not there in this particular case directly 20% if income is more than 5 lakh up to 10 lakh then 20% and more than 10 lakh 30% is a tax rate now guys here it is mentioned that senior citizen means resident individual is 60 years or more in previous year and super senior citizen means resident individual is 80 years or more in previous year now what is the your previous year can i say that your previous year is 2223 and 2223 means from 1st april 2022 till 31st march 2023 is your previous year now remember that if any person is celebrating his 60th birthday means any person is celebrating his 60th birthday as on 1st april 2023 then also it will assume that he has completed the 60 year age on 31st march 2023 and he can claim the enhanced basic exemption benefit in the current year what i am saying that if any individual celebrating his 60th birthday means he is cutting the cake as on 1st april 2023 then also it is presumed that he has completed the age of the 60 year as on 31st march 2023 and in the previous year 2223 he can claim the higher basic exemption of 3 lakh rupees or any person celebrating his 80th birthday 80th birthday as on 1st april 2023 then also he has completed the age of the 80 years as on 31st march 2023 and he can claim the higher basic exemption of the 5 lakh in the previous year 2223 so always remember whenever you celebrate your birthday na that particular age is already attained on the last date that particular age is already completed on the last day and here in this particular case you can claim the higher basic exemption you got my point or not yes so this is the tax rate for the individual huf aop boi artificial juridical person whether it is a resident or non resident now guys there is a concept of the surcharge is such surcharge is applicable or not answer is yes in case of individual huf aop boi artificial juridical person surcharge is applicable if your total income that is net taxable income is up to 50 lakh then surcharge is not applicable 
If total income is up to 50 lakh, then surcharge is not applicable. But suppose total income is more than 50 lakh, up to 1 crore, then surcharge is applicable at the rate 10%. If total income more than 1 crore, up to 2 crore, then surcharge applicable at the rate 15%. If total income more than 2 crore, up to 5 crore, surcharge applicable at the rate 25%. And total income more than 5 crore, then surcharge applicable at the rate 37%. 37% surcharge if total income is more than 5 crore. Now one more point here guys, like here we have discussed that surcharge is applicable if total income more than 50 lakh up to 1 crore, 10% more than 1 crore, up to 2 crore, 15% more than 2 crore, up to 5 crore, 25% more than 5 crore, then 37% and you have to surcharge, you have to add the surcharge on the tax. So first you have to calculate the tax and after that you have to add the surcharge. Surcharge means basically tax on tax, you can say that. Now guys, here try to remember one thing, lawmaker says that Suppose you are having the income from the long term capital gain under section 112A. Long term capital gain under section 112A is long term capital gain from the share market. And guys, you know that 112A is taxable at the rate 10% in excess of the 1 lakh rupees. Or suppose you are having the short term capital gain 111A. And short term capital gain 111A is basically short term capital gain from the share market. And guys, if you are having the dividend income, now there is a one amendment and they have included here LTCG under section 112 also. LTCG under section 112 is normal long term capital gain like long term capital gain on transfer of the house property or long term capital gain on the transfer of jewelry and all that is taxable at the rate 20%. So there are four type of the specified income. Lawmaker says that on this four type of specified income whatever the amount of whatever the level of this income maximum surcharge can be 15%. Maximum surcharge can be 15%. It means guys 25% and 37% surcharge not applicable. 25% and 37% surcharge not applicable. Whatever the level of the income, even in case of long term capital gain 112A or normal long term capital gain or short term capital gain 311A or dividend income, even it is a 10 crore, 15 crore, 20 crore, then also maximum surcharge can be 15%. It means 25% and 37% surcharge is not applicable on the tax on this specified income. Now I can take one example, all people pay attention, just remember here, just focus to the example number 4. So example number 4, here total income other than specified income, a specified income is this 4 income, LTCG 112A, LTCG 112, STC 311A and dividend income. So other than this 4 income, your remaining income is suppose 45 lakh rupees and this specified income is a 3 crore rupees. So total comes to 3.45 uh, 3 crore. So income is more than 2 crore up to 5 crore surcharge should be 25 percent. But guys, on this specified income tax means whatever tax on this specified income, your maximum surcharge can be 15 percent. So here surcharge applicable on tax calculated on the specified income, your maximum surcharge can be 15% and guys the balance income means other income. Is other income itself is more than 2 crore? Answer is no. Other income is not more than 2 crore. So on other income, whatever tax you will calculate on that also, your surcharge will be applicable at the rate 15%. Now one more example, directly check the example number 13. Now in example number 13, your other income is 3 crore. And your specified income is 1 crore, so total income is 4 crore. So total income is 4 crore, it means I can say that your total income is more than 2 crore up to 5 crore, surcharge should be 25%. But guys, on a specified income, maximum surcharge can be 15%. But on the balance income, is balance income itself is more than 2 crore? Answer is yes, nah. balance income itself is more than 2 crore, it is a 3 crore. So whatever tax on that balance income, here surcharge will be applicable at the rate 25%. Here surcharge applicable at the rate 25%. Or in the other way or in the simple language, I have mentioned here, all people pay attention, just try to understand here. In case of individual HUF, AOP, BOI, artificial juridical person, if your total income is up to 50 lakh, na, then obviously there is no surcharge. If your total income is up to 50 lakh, there is no surcharge. If your total income is more than 50 lakh up to 1 crore, then yes, surcharge is applicable at the rate 10%. If your total income is more than 1 crore, up to 2 crore, surcharge is applicable at the rate 15%. So if your total income is up to 2 crore, nah, then guys, there is no need to check anything else. Like it is a very simple, very normal. If your total income is more than 1 crore, up to 2 crore, just add the surcharge at the rate 15%. But guys, if total income is more than 2 crore, in that particular case, that dividend or capital gain taxable under section 112A, 112 or 311A, whatever the amount of capital gain and dividend, your maximum surcharge on tax on this income will be the 15%. Now guys, your remaining income, remaining income, remaining income is other than this specified income. You have to check that remaining income. Is this remaining income itself is more than 2 crore or not? 
इफ रिमेनिंग इनकम इट सेल्फ इज मोर देन टू करोड़ इफ रिमेनिंग इनकम इट सेल्फ इज मोर देन टू करोड़ इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस ऑन द रिमेनिंग इनकम टैक्स वॉट एवर दैट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सर चार्ज इज एप्लीकेबल और सपोज इफ रिमेनिंग इनकम अदर देन दिस स्पेसिफाइड इनकम इफ रिमेनिंग इनकम इट सेल्फ इज मोर देन फाइव करोड़ देन गाइज टैक्स सर चार्ज ऑन टैक्स ऑन दैट रिमेनिंग इनकम विल बी एप्लीकेबल एट द रेट थर्टी सेवन परसेंट सो यू गॉट माई पॉइंट ऑन नॉट यस सो वॉट आई हैव एक्सप्लेन ऑल पीपल पे अटेंशन इट्स वेरी सिंपल First, if your total income is up to 50 lakh, there is no need to add the surcharge. If your total income more than 50 lakh, up to 1 crore, then surcharge is applicable at the rate 10%. More than 1 crore, up to 2 crore, surcharge is applicable at the rate 15%. More than 2 crore, up to 5 crore, surcharge is applicable at the rate 25%. And more than 5 crore, then 37%. But always remember, like if there is a LTCG 112, 112A or STCG 111A or dividend income on the tax on this specified income, maximum surcharge can be 15%, not more than that. But guys, remaining income other than this income, if remaining income itself is more than two crore, na, then on tax on that remaining income, surcharge will be applicable at the rate twenty five percent. Or remaining income itself is more than five crore, then tax on that remaining income surcharge will be applicable at the rate thirty seven percent. Now we are going to start with the tax rate for the company. Now there are two type of company. One is the domestic company and one is the foreign company. Now guys, in case of the domestic company, your tax rate is thirty percent. But in case of domestic company, if turnover or gross receipt for the previous year 2021 is up to 400 crore, means not more than 400 crore, then guys tax rate is 25%. So what I am saying that normally in case of domestic company, your tax rate is 30%. But in case of domestic company, if your total turnover or gross receipt for the previous year 2021 is up to 400 crore, means it is not more than 400 crore, then guys your tax rate will be 25%. In case of foreign company, your tax rate is 40%. Now is the surcharge is applicable in case of companies? Answer is yes, surcharge is applicable. But surcharge depends on your total income. Obviously, in case of the domestic company, if total income is more than 1 crore up to 10 crore, then surcharge is applicable at the rate 7% and total income is more than 10 crore, then surcharge is applicable at the rate 12%. And in case of foreign company, it is the 2% and 5%. In case of foreign company, it is 2% and 5%. Now next part is related to the partnership firm LLP and local authority guys remember in case of partnership firm local authority and LLP your tax rate is a flat 30% means flat 30% is tax rate surcharge is applicable if your total income is more than 1 crore then surcharge is applicable at the rate 12% here 12% surcharge is applicable if total income is more than 1 crore now in case of the cooperative society in case of cooperative society guys if total income is up to 10,000 now then tax rate is 10% if more than 10,000 up to 20 20,000 then tax rate is 20%, more than 20,000 that tax rate is 30%. Is surcharge is applicable? Answer is yes. Here surcharge is applicable and guys here there is an amendment please change in your book also. And there is one amendment and that amendment says that now in case of cooperative society or surcharge will be applicable like a domestic company. And in case of domestic company, you know that surcharge is applicable at the rate 7%. If your net taxable income is more than 1 crore up to 10 crore and total income is more than 10 crore, then surcharge is applicable at the rate 12%. So in the similar manner on cooperative society also, surcharge will be applicable at the rate 7% or 12%. Now one more point guys, first you have to calculate the tax, in th that tax you have to add the surcharge and after that always you have to add the health and education cess at the rate 4%. You have to add the health and education cess at the rate 4%. So in case of all SSC, you have to add the health and education cess at the rate 4%. Now we are going to start with one concept that is called marginal relief. Now what is the marginal relief? So marginal relief we can understand by way of one example. Guys, there is a one example that total income of the Sri Limited, there is a one domestic company and that domestic company total income is suppose 1 crore 1 lakh and here tax rate is 30%. So can I say that on 1 crore 1 lakh if you calculate the tax then 30% tax is a 30 lakh 30,000. Is surcharge is applicable or not? Answer is yes, surcharge is applicable because your total income is more than 1 crore. So in case of domestic company, if your total income is more than 1 crore, then surcharge is applicable at the rate 7%. So here I have added the 7% surcharge that comes to the 2,12,100. So total comes to 32,42,100. Now guys, suppose in this particular example, suppose your company income is only 1 crore. Assume that company income was only 1 crore. Then can I say that on 1 crore your tax will be 30%? It means 30 lakh rupees is a tax. 
Is surcharge is applicable? Answer is no. If your total income is only 1 crore rupees, then obviously surcharge is not applicable in case of company. Surcharge is applicable only if the total income is more than 1 crore. So on 1 crore total income, surcharge is not applicable. So here 30 lakh is your tax amount. Now what happened in this particular case, company has earned 1 lakh rupees higher means. Company has earned 1 lakh rupees more. So in this particular case, company says that our income is increases only 1 lakh. But due to that, your tax is increases 2,42,100. That is due to surcharge. Here, tax is increased higher as compared to income. Means income is increased only 1 lakh rupees, but tax is increased 2,42,100. That is due to the surcharge. So here, lawmaker says that don't worry that, don't worry about that. We are going to give you the marginal relief. And here, in this particular case, can I say that, guys, your income is increased over 1 crore is 1 lakh rupees. And due to that, your tax is increase is 2,42,100 rupees. So here Nirbala Sita Ramanji says that don't worry, we will charge only 1 lakh from you and 1,42,100 marginal relief we will provide you. Now guys, what you have to do in your examination? So in examination, surcharge here marginal relief is applicable wherever surcharge is applicable. It means in case of companies, suppose your income is little bit more than 1 crore or little bit more than 10 crore. In case of individual HUF, AOP, BOI, artificial juridical person, your income is little bit more than 50 lakh or suppose little bit more than 1 crore, 2 crore and 5 crore because on 1 crore, 2 crore and 5 crore your surcharge rate is going to be changed. In case of partnership firm, LLP and local authority, your income is little bit more than 1 crore, then you have to check the marginal relief. What you have to follow, all people pay attention, you have to follow this particular procedure. First, whatever your level of income, just calculate the tax on that income. After that, just add the surcharge. And after adding the surcharge, just you have to write that tax on 1 crore rupees. Means suppose that company's income was only 1 crore, then can I say that tax on 1 crore was 30 lakh rupees and just give that excess income over 1 crore to the Nirmala Sita Ramanji plus NTI minus 1 crore. So NTI minus 1 crore is 1 lakh. So just give this 1 lakh rupees to Nirmala Sita Ramanji. So it should be a 31 lakh rupees. Here I am saying that this 31 lakh rupees, this 32 lakh 42,100 is restricted to 31 lakh rupees. So in simple word, I can say that just you have to continue the whichever is lower amount and here whichever is lower is 31 lakh rupees and after that add the health and education says so here automatically you will get the marginal relief amount of the 1 lakh 42,100. Now in the second example suppose one company and that company income is a 10 crore 2 lakh 30,000. So here 10 crore 2 lakh 30,000 means income is little bit more than 10 crore and on 10 crore in case of company that surcharge rate will be changed from 7% to 12% in case of domestic company. So here guys, first you have calculate the tax on that total income. After that, just add the surcharge at the rate 12%. And after adding the surcharge, here you have to write that this amount is restricted to tax on 10 crore. But remember, whenever you calculate the tax on 10 crore, now, that time you have to consider at least that 7% surcharge. Because if your income was only 10 crore, then 7% surcharge is applicable. Now, obviously, 12% is not applicable, but 7% is applicable. So here, tax on 10 crore and plus NTI minus 10 crore means whatever income in excess of 10 crore, just give to the Nirbala Sita Ramanji. So here, this amount will come. And guys, after that, whichever is lower, you have to continue. Automatically, you will get the marginal relief amount. Now, suppose in the Example number third, there is a one person, Mr. Sam. Sam income is more than 1 crore. That is little bit more than 1 crore, 1 crore, 1 lakh. So what you will do? First, you will calculate the tax on 1 crore, 1 lakh. After that, you will add the surcharge at the rate 15%. And guys, this amount will be restricted to tax on 1 crore. This amount will be restricted to tax on 1 crore, tax on 1 crore plus excess income just give to the Nirmala Sita Ramanji. So tax on 1 crore plus NTI minus 1 crore and whatever amounts come here, guys, whichever is lower, you have to continue and balance will be treated as your marginal relief. You got my point or not? Yes. So whenever your income is little bit more than 1 crore in case of company or little bit more than 10 crore, little bit means 2 lakh, 3 lakh, 4 lakh, 5 lakh, then you have to check. Suppose in case of company, your income is 1 crore 35 lakh, then obviously there is no need to check the marginal relief but little bit more than that uh, like limit wherever surcharge is applicable or surcharge rate is changed at that place you have to check the marginal relief concept after that guys there is a one section 87a 87a is a rebate 
and this 87a rebate is applicable only in case of the resident individual so 87a rebate says that in case of the resident individual if your net taxable income is only up to 5 lakh rupees means it is not more than 5 lakh rupees then rebate is applicable at the rate 100% of the tax or 12500 whichever is lower so in the practical life we always says that if your income is up to 5 lakh then there is no need to pay the tax because up to 5 lakh rupees your income is suppose only 4 lakh 80000 so whatever tax you will calculate or 12500 lower will be the tax amount it means you are there is no need to pay the tax now question is that case this rebate is applicable to huf and all answer is no this is applicable only in case of the resident individual and having the net taxable income is of 5 lakh now one more point sir is this rebate is applicable only in case of the normal type of income or even there are some special income then also rebate is applicable right answer is any type of the income rebate is applicable even you are having the long term capital gain 112 or short term capital gain triple one a or suppose there is a winning income and all this rebate is applicable but remember one point here guys this rebate is not applicable against the long term capital gain under section 112a long term capital gain under section 112a is the long term capital gain from the share market and that is taxable at the rate 10% in excess of 1 lakh so against that long term capital gain this rebate is not applicable against that long term capital gain this rebate is not applicable but other than that long term capital gain against all other type of income all other type of income is yes this rebate is applicable answer is yes now for an example suppose one person is having a lottery income of rupees 4 lakh he is having only lottery income of 4 lakh he don't have any other income and resident individual so resident individual total income is up to 5 lakh rupees how you will calculate the tax so on the 4 lakh rupees you will calculate the tax at the rate 30 percent that is 1 lakh 20 thousand can you claim the rebate answer is yes here rebate will be 1 lakh 20 thousand is tax or 12,500 whichever is lower so here 12,500 will be the rebate and remaining 1 lakh 7,500 will be the remaining tax and after that you will add the health and education says you got my point or not yes now Always remember, whatever the net taxable income is, total income of any person, as well as the net tax payable, that has to be rounded off in the nearest rupees of the 10. Now, nearest rupees of the 10 means, suppose if there is a 1, 2, 3, 4, then you have to round it off to the lowest 10. And suppose there is a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then you have to round it off to the upper 10. You got my point or not? Yes. Now, we are going to start with the, some special tax rate. And guys, in a special tax rate, there are some special tax rate for the domestic companies and all. You remember that 22%, 15% and all. So that we will discuss. But guys, there is a first section, 115BA. But 115BA is not relevant as of now for the examination purpose also. So you can skip the section 115BA because in the ICI material also, they have not given the like uh, provision related to 115BA. Only they have mentioned at one or two places about 115BA. And today's uh, in the today's scenario, this section, no one will opt this particular section 115BA. But we are going to start with one very interesting section that is 115B. AA. This is very interesting section. Now, 115BAA is one new section that was introduced by the Nirmala Sita Ramanji in the 2019 through the Taxation Law Amendment Act 2019 and it is applicable from the assessment year 2021. Now, this particular section says that in case of the domestic company, domestic company has an option that domestic company can pay the tax at the rate 22%. Means only 22% is tax rate. Normally, in case of domestic company, you know that 25% is tax rate or 30%. Normally 30%, but it turnover for the previous year 2021 is up to 400 crore. Then in case of domestic company, your tax rate is uh, like 25%. Here, a domestic company can pay the tax only at the rate 22%. But sir, this 22% tax rate is applicable for only new domestic company or old also. Right answer is any domestic company. Whether that dom domestic company is a new company or old company, whether domestic company is engaged in the manufacturing business or non-manufacturing business or service industry, any type of the domestic company, listed, unlisted, private, public, any type of the domestic company can opt this particular section. And sir, tax rate is 22%. Yes, but sir, is tax rate 22% is effective tax rate? Answer is no. In 22% tax rate, you have to add the 10% surcharge always. Always you have to add the 10% surcharge and 4% health and education says. So guys, effective tax rate will be the 25.168%. Here effective tax rate is a 25.168%. Sir, you are saying that okay, here we have to add the surcharge at the rate 10%. It means, sir, always 10% or only income is more than that 1 crore and all. Guys, here you have to add the surcharge 10% always. Always means even your income. 
even that domestic company income is up 2000 rupees then also you have to add the surcharge at the rate 10 percent if company opted this section then you have to add the surcharge at the rate 10 percent so 22 percent is tax rate plus 10 percent surcharge and 4 percent health and education says so simply i can say that your effective tax rate will be 25.168 percent now one more point guys here what about sir other head of income suppose business income will be taxable at 22 percent what about the like house property income ifos income is that will also be taxable at the rate 22 percent for that domestic company answer is yes so other head income like house property head income or other sources income that will also be taxable at the rate 22 percent but sir what about the special rates income like ltcg 112 a normally taxable at the rate 10 percent ltcg 112 taxable at 20 percent stcg triple one a taxable at the rate 15 percent winning income taxable at the rate 30 percent what about that special rates of income guys special rates of income will be taxable at, as per special rates only Special rates of income will be taxable as per special rates only but always remember in that special rate you have to add the 10% surcharge and 4% health and education says. So normally long term capital gain 112A that will be taxable at the rate 10% but plus add 10% surcharge and 4% health and education says. So here sir 22% tax rate is beneficial section answer is yes. Now one more point. If any domestic company opted this particular section now, then that domestic company is not required to pay the MAT. MAT is not applicable. MAT means minimum alternate tax. That topic is not applicable if company opted this particular section. Now question is that, okay, sir, when MAT is not applicable, what about the broad forward MAT credit? If there is any broad forward MAT credit, then what will happen with that broad forward MAT credit? Guys, that broad forward MAT credit will be lapsed. Because when company opted this section, then MAT is not applicable. So, your brought forward uh, that MAT credit will be left. So, always it is advisable for the company to first set up the MAT credit and only after that opt this particular beneficial section. You got my point or not? Yes. Now, one more point. Lawmaker says that okay, if company wish to opt this particular section 22% now, then company has to surrender some benefit. Means company not eligible to claim the benefit of 10 AA section 10 AA in the like uh, SEZ. You know that SEZ that 15, per, 15 years deduction is available. First five year 100% of the export profit. Second five year 50% of export profit and all. So that 10 AA deduction is not available. After that additional depreciation under section 32 12A that is not applicable. Now 32 AD was earlier there was one investment allowance. Nowadays this investment allowance is not applicable. So just you can skip the 32 AD. So what I am saying that first is 10 AA benefit is not available. Second is additional depreciation not available. After that 33 AB and 33 ABA this benefit not available. Now 33 AB was related to the you know that tea coffee and rubber development board and 33 ABA is related to the site restoration account. So that benefit is not available. After that under section 35 subsection 1 clause number 2 clause number 2A clause number 30 uh, clause number 3 or 35 AA and 35 AB this deductions not available. You remember that under section 35 scientific research uh, we have discussed in the classroom that uh, whenever you made the donation to the Rajni ICU, Rajni ICU means research association institute college or university for the scientific research or social statistical research 100% deduction is available that deduction is not allowed or any donation is made to Indian company engaged in the research and development for the scientific research that deduction not available any donation is made to the IIT national laboratory 100% deduction is available that deduction not available so in simple word you can remember that under section 35 whatever donation based deduction was there now like in-house research if you are doing and incurring the expenditure for the in-house research for the revenue or capital nature under section 3511 or 3514 that is allowed but whatever donation based deduction was there that donation based deduction is not available if company opted this particular section. One more point says that okay, section 35 AD deduction not available. 35 AD that 14 specified business. Cold chain facility warehousing for the agriculture produce warehousing for the sugar that slurry pipeline and hotel hospital and all. So 35 AD deduction not available. 35 triple C and 35 CCD deduction is not available. That is agriculture extension project and skill development project. That deduction is not available. Now guys any deduction under chapter 6A is not available. Any deduction under chapter 6a, under chapter 6a there are various deductions like ATG, ATGGB, ATGGC and all that any deduction under chapter 6a is not available. 
But there are three exceptional cases. This three deduction can be claimed by that domestic company, even that domestic company opting this beneficial provision. And that three deduction is one is the AT double JAA, one is the AT LA, and one is the AT M. AT double JAA is related to the new employee recruit. Whenever you recruit the new employee, then whatever salary paid to the new employee for the three years, you can claim the 30% deduction of that salary that is allowed. ATLA is related to IFSC located company. If company is located in the IFSC, then 10 years they can claim the reduction under section ATLA. And ATM is related to the intercorporate dividend. Miss domestic company received dividend from the other domestic company or foreign company or business trust. Then they can claim one deduction under section ATM. So this three deduction can be claimed by company. But other than this three deduction, any deduction under chapter 6A is not available to that company. You got my point or not? Yes. So what I am saying that all people pay attention. If company opted this beneficial provision of 22%, then company has to surrender sub benefit. One is the 10 AA deduction not available. After that, additional depreciation not allowed. 33AB, 33ABA not allowed. Scientific research donation, re donation related deduction not allowed. 35AD not allowed. 35 C CCD is not allowed. And any deduction under Chapter 6A is not available except three that is ATJAA, ATLA, and ATM. This three deduction can be claimed by the company. Now, guys, lawmaker says that suppose if if there is any broad forward losses due to this section or broad forward depreciation due to this three section this this three this all section then guys that you cannot set up and carry forward means it is going to be lapse what i am saying there try to understand all people pay attention if there is any broad forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation due to this section then guys that brought forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation you have to ignore means it is going to be lapse you cannot set up and carry forward in simple word i can say that for an example there is a one domestic company and domestic company is having the brought forward losses related to 35 ad business suppose our company is having the two business one is the coaching class business and one we are we were having one hotel and suppose hotel is two star over category and hotel related losses is there and that losses was due to the 35 ad section so that losses we cannot set up now if we have opted this section then that losses will be ignored that losses will be lapsed we cannot set up that losses one more point suppose in our unabsorbed depreciation there is an additional depreciation in our unabsorbed depreciation, there is an additional depreciation, then that additional depreciation has to be ignored. That additional depreciation we cannot set up and carry forward. You got my point or not? Yes. One more point says that, okay guys, once this particular like a section is opted, na, then company has to opt this particular section for the future year also. But suppose in the future year, in any year, if company violated any condition and company has not satisfied this condition, then guys, company will come out from this section and again, they cannot opt this particular section. So once company out from this section, then again, they cannot opt this particular section for the lifetime. One more point says that, sir, suppose this company wants to opt this particular beneficial section, na, then company has to file one form that is form number 10 IC up to the due date of return filing. Up to the due date of return filing of any year, like suppose for an example, our company was incorporated in 2006 and that company wants to opt this section in the previous year 20 to 23, then whatever the due date of return filing of previous year 20 to 23, normally in case of company, the due date of return filing will be 31st October of assessment year. So till 31st October of assessment year, company has to file one form that is 10 IC and company can opt this particular section. You got my point or not? Yes. Now next section is a 115 BAB and 115 BAB is also very necessary section for your examination because in examination in the first question of the PGBP either you will get the question from the 115 BAB or you will get the question from the 115 BAA. Now 115 BAB is very interesting section. This section says that okay, in case of the new domestic manufacturing company just focus to my word. What I am saying that new domestic and manufacturing company. There is a new domestic and manufacturing company. So in case of the new domestic manufacturing company, your tax rate will be only 15% tax rate. Only 15% is tax rate. Now question is that sir, 15% is the effective? Answer is no. In 15%, you have to add the surcharge at the rate 10% always like 115BAA. You have to add the 4% health and education says. So effectively, your tax rate will be 17.16% is tax rate. So in case of the new domestic manufacturing company, your tax rate will be the 17.16% effectively or I can say that 15% is tax rate. 
बट गाइज देयर इज अन कंडीशन दैट कंपनी शुड बी एंगेज इन द मैनुफैक्चरिंग बिजनेस एंड कंपनी शुड बी इनकॉर्पोरेटेड एंड सेटअप ऑन और आफ्टर फर्स्ट अक्टूबर टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एंड दैट कंपनी शुड कमेंस द मैनुफैक्चरिंग बिजनेस टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर that manufacturing business should be commenced till 31st march 2024 guys earlier like in till last year that date was 2023 and but in the by finance act 2022 they made one amendment and they have increased that benefit for the one more year and they are saying that manufacturing business should be commenced till 31st march 2024 now sir you are saying that the tax rate is only 15% if company opted this section then tax rate is only 15% but sir what about the other income other head income like this is for the manufacturing business income manufacturing business income tax rate is only 15% what about the house property income or other sources income guys for house property income or other sources income that 15% benefit is not available for house property or other sources income your tax rate will be the 22% your tax rate will be 22% only for manufacturing business your tax rate is 15% for house property income as well as the other sources income and all tax rate will be the 22 percent but guys here in this section they have mentioned that okay, while computing the income under that house property or other sources and all any deduction is not allowed any deduction exemption is not allowed it means gross income will be going to be taxable like house property gross income is taxable or other sources gross income will be taxable like in house property you know that the standard deduction 30 percent is available is that will be allowed answer is no that will not be allowed if company followed section 115 bab or guys in case of the like other sources like suppose company receive the dividend then on dividend that interest expenses is allowed that should be up to 20% of the dividend income so is that deduction is allowed answer is no under house property other sources and all here gross income is going to be taxable this was here this is only this condition in this 115 bab under 115 bwa there was no such type of the condition but here this is the condition that your gross income is going to be taxable any deduction under section 24 or 57 and all that is not allowed at all now sir you are saying that ke house property income other sources income will be taxable at 22% but what about the special rates of income like special rates of income like ltcg 112a stcg 111a ltcg 112 winning and all that special rates of income will be taxable as per special rate only but obviously you have to add the 10% surcharge and 4% health and education cess now guys what about the short term capital gain normally you know that short term capital gain is taxable as per the normal tax rate because short term capital gain triple 1a will be taxable at the rate 15% but other short term capital gain is going to be taxable as per the normal rate only so what about the short term capital gain here lawmaker says that the short term capital gain on the transfer of the depreciable asset if there is a short term capital gain on the transfer of the depreciable asset then that is going to be taxable at the rate 15% means short term capital gain on the transfer of the depreciable asset that is going to be taxable at the rate 15% but short term capital gain on the transfer of non depreciable asset that is taxable at the rate 22% why 15% on the depreciable asset short term capital gain because guys suppose there is a depreciable asset you have claimed the depreciation so depreciation you have claimed so your manufacturing business income is reduced means it means you have saved the 15% tax so if you transfer that asset and there is a short term capital gain you have to pay the tax at the rate 15% but suppose if there is a non depreciable asset then short term capital gain is going to be taxable at the rate 22% so in simple word can i say that 15% tax rate is applicable only for the two type of income one is the manufacturing business income and second is your short term capital gain on the transfer of the depreciable asset and all other income will be taxable at the rate 22% and guys your special rates of tax income will be taxable at, as per special rates only now there is a one 30% also now what is the meaning of that 30% we will discuss later now one more point if company opted this particular section now then guys mat is not applicable there is no question of the mat mat is not applicable if company opted section 115 bab now one more point question is mat credit guys mat credit there is no question of mat credit because in the first year of the return means when a company is a new in this particular example company is a new in this particular section company is a new and company will file the first return in the first return only company has to opt this particular section so obviously from first year only mat is not applicable so there is no question of the mat credit one more point sir if company opted this particular section now then there are lots of condition that company has to fulfill first condition is company should be engaged in manufacturing business and that company should be set up and registered between 1st october 2019 and on or after 1st october 2019 and manufacturing business should be commenced 
अप टू थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बिजनेस शुड बी कमेंस टिल थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर दैट इज द फर्स्ट कंडीशन सेकंड कंडीशन कंपनी शुड नॉट बी लाइक कंपनी शुड नॉट बी लाइक दैट बिजनेस शुड नॉट बी स्प्लिट अप और रिकंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ योर एक्जिस्टिंग बिजनेस इट मींस दैट बिजनेस शुड बी अ न्यू बिजनेस इट शुड नॉट बी लाइक इंटरनल रिकंस्ट्रक्शन एंड ऑल हियर दैट बिजनेस शुड बी अ न्यू बिजनेस दैट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग बिजनेस शुड बी अ न्यू बिजनेस थर्ड कंडीशन वॉट एवर प्लांट एंड मशीनरी रिक्वायर्ड बाय दैट कंपनी दैट प्लांट एंड मशीनरी शुड बी द न्यू Miss plant and machinery should be the new, but there are two exceptional cases. One is the your to twenty percent of the total plant and machinery. Means out of the total plant and machinery, twenty percent plant and machinery can be the second end. And second is a imported second end plant and machinery will be treated as new only for the purpose of this section. What I am saying that normally your plant and machinery should be the new means your all plant and machinery should be the new. But there are two exceptional cases. One is the like twenty percent can be a second hand plant and machinery, and third is whatever the imported second hand plant and machinery will be treated as new only for the purpose of this section. Now, guys, there is a fourth condition. That fourth condition says that the company cannot use any building which was earlier used as a hotel or conventional center. Miss company is not going to use any building which was earlier used as a hotel or convention center. That building is not allowed in this business. Now one more condition that company should be engaged in the manufacturing business. Miss company should be engaged in manufacturing business as well as the research related to that business as well as the distribution of product produced by that company. So company should be engaged in only this activity. One is the manufacturing business. Second is research and development related to that business. And third is the distribution of product produced by that company. Only that activity should be done by that company. Now, guys, there are five exceptional cases. They are saying that this five business will not be treated as manufacturing business. First is the software development is not treated as manufacturing business. Mining business is not treated as manufacturing business. Conversion of marble blocks into the slabs or you can say tiles and all that is not treated as manufacturing business. Bottling of gas into the cylinder that is not treated as manufacturing business. And printing of books as well as the production of the movies not treated as a manufacturing business. So what I am saying that all people pay attention. Computer software development is not a manufacturing software development not manufacturing mining is not a manufacturing conversion of marble blocks into the slabs or slice slice that is not treated as manufacturing business bottling of gas into cylinder is not treated as manufacturing business printing of books and production of movies are not treated as manufacturing business but always remember if there is a power generating business now that will be treated as manufacturing business here lawmakers clearly mentioned that if any person is engaged in the power generation that will be treated as manufacturing business one more point next condition says that a company cannot claim this benefit company not allowed to claim the 10 double a benefit additional depreciation 33 ab aba and 35 scientific research related donation based deduction 35 ad 35 triple c 35 ccd and any deduction under chapter 6a is not available except 80 double j double a and 80m Miss any deduction under Chapter Six A is not available except eighty double J double A and eighty M. Eighty double J double A and eighty M can be claimed by the company, but other deduction under Chapter Six A is not available to the company. Now this section says that okay, suppose if due to this particular section, if there is any brought forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation, that is not allowed to be set off. But guys, there will not be any question in the practical life because in the first year only, when company is opting one one five BAB, then from first year only, company cannot claim this benefit of this section. Then obviously there is no question of unabsorbed depreciation or brought forward losses due to this section. But there can be a one case. Suppose for an example, we have started one company that is BB Manufacturing Company. and new company all conditions satisfied now after 4 5 year suppose one another company merge with our company means another company is amalgamated with our, our company then can i say that that uh, that company losses and unabsorbed depreciation we can set up and carry forward because in case of amalgamation amalgamating company losses and amalgamating company unabsorbed depreciation can be carry forward and set up by the amalgamated company but guys here law maker says that suppose that amalgamating company is having the losses due to this section or unabsorbed depreciation due to this section then that is not allowed to be set up and carry forward to our company now one more point Guys, if any SSC wants to opt this particular section, na one one five BAB, then that SSC has to opt this section in the first return. Whenever that company will file the first return of income due before the due date of filing of return, they have to opt this particular section in the first return only. Ah, if in the first return they miss this section, then they cannot opt this particular section in future. You got my point or not? Yes. Now one more point. Suppose this uh, this provision. 
is followed by the company company opted this particular section and company paid the taxes at the rate 15 percent now in future there is a violation in future if there is a violation then company will come out from this section and again company is not eligible to opt this particular section now all people pay attention here lawmaker says that suppose company has violated condition number three four or five now here condition number three four and five three was related to second and plant and machinery there is a limit fourth is related to they cannot use any building which was used as hospital or conventions sorry hotel or convention center or fifth is that manufacturing business suppose if there is any violation of any condition out of this three condition then company will come out from 115 bab but company have an option that company can opt the section 115 bwa Miss company can pay the taxes at the rate 22 percent instead of the 15 percent if there is a violation of condition mentioned under point number three four or five you got my point or not yes now one more point guys always what company will do you know that company will show the higher profit higher profit in a, a higher profit when company is opting this particular section i can take example suppose i am a one shareholder and i am a common shareholder we are having one company in the mumbai and in mumbai company is paying the tax at the rate 25 percent or 30 percent we have incorporated one new company in the jaipur and started the manufacturing business in the jaipur and all the condition of 115 bab is satisfied now what we will do you know that we always try to increase the profit of the jaipur company and we will try to decrease the profit of the bombay company why it is because in the Jaipur company, tax rate is only 15%, but in the Bombay company, the tax rate is a 30% or 25%. So what we do, did you know that we just book one purchase in the Mumbai company from the like sales made in the by the Jaipur company. And we have, you know, that sale is made at very high value. So due to high value, what happened that Jaipur company profit is increased, but they have to pay only tax at the rate 15%. But Mumbai company purchases increase. It means profit is decreased and we have the save the taxes of 25% or 30%. So here lawmaker says that here lawmaker says that okay, suppose in company who's, who is opting section 115 BAB, if their profit is an extraordinary profit, if there is, is it is a normal profit then there is no issue but if there is any super profit or extraordinary profit then here ao will check that and on that super profit extraordinary profit ao will charge the tax at the rate 30 percent instead of the 15 percent means ao will charge the tax at the rate 30 percent instead of the 15 percent and 30 percent plus 10 percent your surcharge and 4 percent health and education says so effectively it will be a 34.32 percent so effectively on that profit company is required to pay the tax at the rate 34.32 percent you got my point or not yes after that i have given the comparison of 115 bwa and 115 bab now just you have to read the comparison now guys after doing this 115 bwa and 115 bab you have to check the two three question given in the uh, like uh, compact here i have given one question that is related to the 115 B A B yeah this question is related to 115 B A B and along with that guys there are two question in your compiler also what you will do just check the suggested answer of the May 2022 examination and in the May 2022 examination I think there was first question was related to 115 B A B and in the December 2021 examination there was one question related to the 115 B A A so just you have to check that two question and from that two question you have to like understand what is the application of the 115 B A B and 115 B A now we are going to start with one more interesting section that is the 115 BAC but obviously 115 BAC they used to ask in the intermediate why because individual tax liability individual assessment is already covered in the intermediate exam so in CA final mostly they will ask you question from the 115 BAA or 115 BAB not from the 115 BAC but from 115 BAC they can ask the small question either with the DTAA topic double taxation avoidance agreement topic they may ask the 115 BAC now next section is 115 BAC 115 BAC says that in case of the individual and HUF guys there is a new taxation regime and under new taxation regime up to 2 lakh 50 thousand there is no tax 2 lakh 50 to 5 lakh 5 percent 5 lakh to 7 lakh 50 thousand 10 percent 750 to 10 lakh 15 percent 10 to 12 50 20 percent 12 50 to 15 25 percent and more than 15 lakh more than 15 lakh your tax is 30 percent now this is the slab rate or you can say that new taxation regime slab rate but question is that this slab rate is applicable only in case of individual and HUF now sir individual HUF resident or non-resident right answer is both suppose sir individual is a senior citizen 
or super senior citizen then you know that sir in the last uh, discussion in the normal tax rate you have mentioned that in case of senior citizen that basic exemption is 3 lakh or 5 lakh so here also is that basic exemption will be increased to 3 lakh or 5 lakh answer is no if senior citizen or super senior citizen if they are opting this particular section now then basic exemption is 2 lakh 50 thousand only here it will not be increased to 2 3 lakh or 5 lakh you got my point or not yes now question is that what about the surcharge sir so surcharge will be applicable as a normal surcharge like if income is more than 50 lakh then 10 percent more than 1 crore then 15 percent 25 percent 37 percent here there is no fixed surcharge in the last two section 115 bwa and 115 bab you know that there was a fixed 10 percent surcharge but here there is no fixed surcharge that depends on the total income a special rates of income will be taxable as per the special rates only a special rates of income is taxable as per special rates only but guys if any individual or huf this particular uh, opted this particular section a new taxation regime then amt is not applicable amt means alternate minimum tax that alternate minimum tax topic is not applicable but guys if assess follow this particular section now then they have to surrender some benefit now what type of benefit they have to surrender we will discuss head wise one is the salary under the head salary under section 16 you know that there are three type of the deduction one is the standard deduction 50,000 that is standard deduction 50,000 rupees is not applicable after that entertainment allowance deduction is available to the government employee that entertainment allowance deduction is not available as well as the professional tax deduction is available to assess that professional tax deduction is not available if assess followed the new taxation regime under the head salary you know that that hra exemption is there under section 1013a that hra exemption is not available that 40 percent or 50 percent of salary or actual amount received or rent paid minus 10 percent of salary there is a hra exemption that hra exemption is not available third is that leave travel concession whenever employee along with the spouse and two children you know that they visit to, for any place and if payment is made by the employer then there is a, some exemption like economic class fare and all that ltc leave travel concession that leave travel concession exemption is not available after that guys on the allowances any exemption is not available you know that on the allowances there were certain exemption you have studied in your intermediate that children hostel allowance 300 per month per child maximum two child children education allowance 100 per month per child maximum two ch child uniform allowance and all so that allowances exemption is not available if ssc opted the new taxation regime but there are three uh, there are four exceptional cases that is the dtdc means you can claim the dtdc exemption even you are opting the new taxation regime here at first d means to divyang employee divyang employee means to handicapped employee there is a commutation or transport allowance exemption is there and that is that is 3200 per month maximum 3200 per month is exemption that is transportation or commutation allowance that exemption is allowed to the handicapped employee that exemption is allowed even assessi followed the new section one more point is a t t means traveling on tour allowance one is the d that is the daily allowance and c is a convince allowance now guys in case of the traveling on tour allowance daily allowance and convince allowance whatever amount actually is spent by the employee now that much amount is exempted whatever amount actually is spent by the employee that much is exempted so guys that exemption can be claimed even employee is opted with the 115 bac even employee so in simple word i can say that under the head salary that 50000 is standard deduction not allowed entertainment allowance deduction to government employee not allowed after that and uh, professional tax deduction not allowed hra exemption not allowed ltc exemption not allowed any allowances exemption is not allowed but there are four exception that is dtdc and here dtdc means d for divyang employee is a commutation allowance exemption t means traveling on tour allowance d means daily allowance and c means convince allowance that allowances exemption is available to the employee you got my point or not yes now guys always remember in under the head house property in case of the self-occupied property you know that that 30,000 or 2 lakh rupees that interest deduction is allowed that is not allowed means that under section 24b in case of self-occupied property that interest deduction is not allowed but in case of the laid out property and deemed to be laid out property that is lop and dlop interest deduction you can claim but guys if there is a loss due to the lop or dlop if there is a loss in D lop or dlop that losses cannot be set off against any other head if there is under house property if there is a loss and that loss due to the interest under dlop or lop that losses cannot be allowed to set up against any other head so what i am saying that first is in case of L sop sop means self occupied property interest deduction is not allowed in case of lop dlop interest deduction is allowed but under lop dlop if there is a loss that losses cannot be set up against any other head of income
In the normal provision, what happened? You know that house property losses can be set off up to 2 lakh against any other head of income. But guys, here it is not allowed if SSC opted 115 BAC. You got my point or not? Yes. Now, next part is related to the PGBP. PGBP 10 AA SEZ not allowed, additional depreciation not allowed, 33 AB ABA not allowed, 35 that scientific research donation related deduction not allowed, 35 AD not allowed and agriculture extension project not allowed. If you check the other sources, then other sources, you know that whenever minor child income is included in the income of parents, then parents can claim that 1500 exemption, that exemption under section 1032 not allowed. MP MLA, they can claim the exemption for the constituency allowance or daily allowance, that exemption is not allowed. Under section 57, family pension deduction is available, that deduction is not allowed. Family pension deduction is like 15,000 per annum or one third of the family pension, that deduction is allowed under section 57, that is not allowed if SSC opted this section. Now, one more point is a deduction under chapter 6a is not allowed. Deduction under chapter 6a is not allowed. Any deduction under chapter 6a is not allowed. Like ATC, ATD, ATDD, ATTTA, ATTTB, ATG, ATGGC, any deduction under chapter 6a is not allowed. But there are two exceptions. One is the ATJJAA is allowed and ATCCD2 is allowed. ATCCD2 is like you know that whenever employer made the contribution to the new pension scheme or central government pension scheme, then guys on that central government pension scheme, whatever contribution made by employer, employee can claim the deduction under section ATCCD2 and that deduction amount is 10% of the salary or contribution made by employer, whichever is lower. And instead of the 10%, there will be a 40% in case of the central government employee or state government employee, then there will be a 14%. So so that can be claimed by employee but other than this two deduction any deduction under chapter 6a not allowed now guys if there is any brought forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation due to all this section that brought forward losses or unabsorbed depreciation due to this section that is not allowed to set up and carry forward you got my point or not yes now one more point guys can we decide every year that we have to opt the new taxation regime or old taxation regime answer is yes at the time of filing of return you have an option that either you can go with the old taxation regime is existing taxation regime or new taxation regime that is 115 bsc you have an option suppose in this year you have opted 115 bsc next year you don't wish to opt 115 bsc you can come out next year you can file the normal return again next year again you want to opt the 115 bsc you can do that but guys remember if there is a pgbp income if there is a PGBP income, business income, and if you opted 115 BAC, then you cannot come out from 115 BAC. But suppose if any condition is violated and you come out from 115 BAC, then again you cannot opt the 115 BAC till the time you are having the business income. Till the time you are having the business income, again you cannot opt the 115 BAC. You got my point or not? Yes. One more point. Guys, suppose for an example, in case of the employee, sir, employer will deduct the TDS as per existing provision or as per the new taxation regime. So that depends. If employee submitted one declaration to employer, then employer will deduct the TDS as per the new taxation regime. Otherwise, employer will deduct the TDS as per the old scheme or you can say that the existing scheme. Now try to understand what happens. Suppose employer deducted TDS as per normal slab rate. But at the time of filing of return, employee realized that new taxation regime is more beneficial. So can employee can file the return as per new taxation regime or not? Answer is yes, he can do that. Or vice versa, for an example here, employer deducted the TDS as per 115 BAC. But at the time of filing of return, employee realized that that existing system is more beneficial. So can employee file the return as per the existing system? Answer is yes. Is it possible? No problem at all. Now next section is 115 BAD. Guys, 115 BAD section, this section is exact replica of section 115 BAA. And under 115 BAA, we have discussed that domestic company tax rate is 22%. So same, it is a replica, but only difference is that was applicable for domestic company. It is applicable for the resident cooperative society. So resident cooperative society, you know that what was the tax rate of cooperative society up to 10,000, 10%, more than 10,000 to 20,000, 20%, more than 20,000, 30%. But resident cooperative society can pay the tax at the rate 22%, plus 10%, and plus 4%. And guys, if resident cooperative society opted section 115 BAA, then AMT is not applicable that alternate minimum tax is not applicable all other provision are similar to section 115 BAA you got my point or not yes now guys always remember 
whenever ssc opted section 115 ba or bwa or bab or bac or bad then maximum depreciation is allowed at the rate 40% means maximum depreciation allowed at the rate 40% it means maximum depreciation allowed at the rate 40% means maximum depreciation you can claim the 40 obviously additional depreciation is not allowed and maximum depreciation you can claim the 40% but you will say that sir anyway maximum depreciation is 40% only now no guys you know that we have discussed that motor vehicle acquired and put to use between 23rd august 2000 and 19 till 31st March 2020 then your normal depreciation was instead of 15% it was 30% and hiring business it was 45% instead of 30% so that 45% is not allowed here maximum depreciation can be claimed as 40% you got my point or not yes so this is the completion of the some special rates of tax that is 115 B double a b a b b a c and b a d now next section is very simple 115 bb 115 bb is related to the winning from the lottery card game horse races winning income is going to be taxable at the rate 30 percent now section 115 bbe is related to the deemed income under section 68 to 69d that is related to the cash credit or unexplained expenditure and all suppose in your account you got some cash and you are not able to explain the source of that income then it is going to be taxable under section 115 bbe and that is taxable at the rate 30 percent plus 25 percent surcharge plus 4 percent health and education says so effective tax rate will be the 78 percent now guys try to understand against this winning income as well as the 115 bbe income like any losses you cannot set up against this income you cannot set up the any other losses as well as any expenditure is not allowed means gross income are going to be taxable under this section one more point is 115 bbf 115 bbf says that if you receive any royalty on the patent and that patent is developed in india then you have an option that you can pay the tax at the rate 10 percent on that royalty income normally royalty income is taxable as per the normal rate but you have an option that ssc can opt the 115 bbf and they can pay the tax at the rate 10 percent but guys there are certain condition first condition condition is that patent should be developed in India and develop means whatever expenditure incurred on that patent at least 75% development expenditure should be incurred in India. Second condition is that SSC should be the resident in India. SSC should be the resident person in India and he has invented that patent in India and patent is registered in the Patent Act 1970. Then only this section is applicable. One more point that gross royalty income will be taxable means against that any expenditure is not allowed as well as that you know that AT, QQB, RRB there was the deduction na? AT, I think RRB against patent that is not allowed means gross royalty will be taxable at the rate 10%. One more point if SSC wants to opt this particular section now then up to the due date of return filing SSC has to opt this option and they have to give one declaration and they have to opt this particular section up to the due date of return filing one more point suppose SSC opted this section 115 BBF and paid the taxes at the rate 10% then guys for the next five years they have to opt this section but suppose in the next five year in any year there is a violation then in the year of violation and next five year that ssc is not eligible to opt this particular section you got my point or not yes now next section is 115 bbg 115 bbg is related to income from transfer of the carbon credit if any person transfer the carbon credit then that income is taxable at the rate 10 percent and guys that income is taxable at on the gross basis gross basis it is taxable at the rate 10 percent guys other all special rates of income we already covered in the rest Respective topic like capital gain income is we have covered in the capital gain in trust topic we also discuss some trust related concept and all that we already covered in the separate topic now there are some notes and this notes are applicable for the above section above section means here 115 bb after that 115 bbe after that 115 bbf after that 115 bbg for special rates guys for a special rate always remember this special rates are income taxable on gross basis gross basis means any deduction under section 28 to 44 c or 57 is not allowed one more point deduction under chapter 6a is not available as well as the basic exemption benefit is also not available but there are certain exception and that exception is you know that in case of the resident individual and HUF if your if your balance income is less than basic exemption then unexhausted basic exemption you can unexhausted basic exemption you can utilize against long-term capital gain as well as the long-term capital gain as well as the short-term capital gain triple one a so long-term capital gain one one two a or long-term capital gain one one two or short-term capital gain triple one a against this three income you can utilize the unexhausted or unutilized basic exemption but that is available only in case of the resident individual and huf so this is completion of your first topic that is the tax rate 
for your examination that is assessment year 23 24 so just you have to listen this revision lecture at least for the 10 times so till examination you can remember all the provision and you can do well in your examination guys for your examination only like limited days are remaining only march and april now fab is like you know that already we are in the mid of the fab so only march and april two months remaining for your examination i just want that you should focus to your examination and now you have only one work that is you have to study don't see here and there don't waste your time on all social media and all on all other activity and all just you have to focus to your examination okay so thanks a lot people that's enough for today from my side see you in the next revision lecture bye take care